Gabe is recognized as a leading social selling influencer by Inc.com, Forbes, and LinkedIn. He's trained and coached hundreds of sales reps on online branding, social selling, and social media ROI. He currently works for HireVue and consults B2B SaaS companies. His latest hobby included kite flying and is on his way to becoming a professional kite flyer. And one thing that everybody should know about Gabe is he said that when he, comes, when he came, moved here to the U.S., he smelled funny. I'm not really sure what that means, but I guess I'll let him explain a little bit more. Great. Um, excited to be here, guys. Um, let's get to it. Uh, six social selling steps. You may have heard of the term social selling. You may have heard of, uh, it's a buzzword for sure. So uh, whether you're looking for a job, you can use social selling. Whether you want a promotion, you can use social selling. Whether you're an inside sales rep or a field rep, you can use social selling. Whether you want to pitch your idea to a VC or uh, to an angel investor, you can use social selling. So don't let the term social selling just kind of help you disqualify yourself from actually utilizing it in your day-to-day -day basis. Um, let's talk about, my, about myself, uh, where I came from before I jump into these awesome six actionable tips on social selling. Um, I'm currently the social selling director at HireVue. HireVue is a SaaS tech startup out of South Jordan. Uh, we use video technology with predictive analytics to analyze uh, body language, voice, uh, and a bunch of other facial recognition cool stuff. It's kind of creepy, like Minority Report. But what's cool about it is that it helps people and companies hire, train, and coach better. Okay, let's not talk much about that, but I'm here representing HireVue, and I'm really excited to do so. I've been doing social selling for the past five years, and it kind of fell upon me. I graduated from UVU with a degree in marketing, and then uh, I came in as an SDR, or as a setter, okay, for a company called InsideSales.com. And I'll get more into that story in a second, but over the past five years, literally, like, I never thought I'd be speaking, like, on, on a stage like this. I mean, what I know is nothing special. I'm not really that smart. I just, I've been able to connect the dots by being at the right time at the right place. Um, because of that, and because of the ROI, because of the revenue that I've brought to companies, a lot of companies started reaching out to me. And I'm like, who is this guy, right? People, you probably thought I'm in high school because I wear a hat. I'm not in high school. But like, I'm like, you know what? If people are gonna come to me, I'm not gonna change who I am. I really want to just be who I am. And if people wanna hire me or, or uh, you know, they want me to do consulting. I'm still gonna be the same Gabe VMSR. And um, lately I've been uh, recognized by Inc.com, Forbes, LinkedIn, Analytica as a social media influencer or social selling, if that means anything to you. Um, so I found this picture of me playing the violin. I failed big time and uh, I thought I'd throw it out there. My kid's hilarious. He's um, almost three years old. The other day, he has quite the personality. Uh, he, I'm working in my home office and he busts in through the door, which I need to put a lock on, and um, he says, look, Daddy, I'm naked. And I'm like, what the heck was that, you know? Um, and I thought about it, okay, maybe I've done that once or twice, and maybe he learned that from me. <laughs> but uh, he's hilarious. Um, the other day, he also said, Daddy, do you have boobies? And I'm like, what? Like, really awesome. I mean, that picture really displays who he really is. And my wife's pregnant. She's killing me for being here tonight. So let's give it up for my wife. Woo! Awesome. I'll tell her you guys clap for, for her. Um, so like I tell you, let's, let's talk about my background real quick. I'm currently at HireVue. I've been there for the past two years. I coach and train on a daily basis 66 of our sales reps, whether they're inside sales reps or field reps or whatever. Okay, then I started my career at InsideSales.com, and then Domo reached out to me for consulting, and then all these other software companies started reaching out to me, and I'm like, oh, my knowledge is very precious. My knowledge, like, people want what I know. It's not, not that really special. So I'm literally gonna tell you tonight the secret sauce. You know, I'm not gonna hold back. I'm gonna tell you straight up what you need to do to make millions in revenue, okay? And I've been able to track it. I've been able to create a, like a formula for success, not just for sales, but really to get anybody's attention online. Um, so my journey, I started out at InsideSales.com, and like I said, I was a sales rep. And I'm like, I went four years of college just to be a sales rep and call people on the phone. I'm like, screw this, you know? I'm really fi gonna find a way to outperform everybody else by not using the phone. So this is back in 2012, I believe. And uh, for three consecutive months, I beat and crushed everybody on appointment sets. So I was able to set more appointments than anybody else in my team at InsideSales.com. InsideSales.com is considered a unicorn, a billion dollar valuation, 
and currently they have, I think, almost 800 or 900 employees. Well, I joined when they had 197 employees. So it's kind of a big deal back then because uh, not a lot of people knew who they were, even though they were taken off. So then after I had killed it for three consecutive months, the president of InsideSales.com at the time, Ken Croak, reached out to me and said, hey, Gabe, what is it that you're doing, bro? Like, well, he didn't say bro, but that's kind of how it comes to me. <laughs> He's still a good friend and mentor. We hang out. Um, and I'm like, He's like, I'm like, Ken, I'm just using social media, okay? InsightSales.com's main product is called the Power Dialer. It's a dialing technology that helps you connect with the buyer in a very efficient and fast-paced way. So then um, I was kind of going against their own product because I was able to connect with the buyer, I was able to f identify the buyer, and actually engage with the buyer in a non-traditional way. So let's talk about more about that, okay? Um, so as I joined Hireview, by the way, this, I got this cool new logo on the bottom left. Chris Cannon, where are you at? He's taking pictures of me back there. If you guys want awesome branding, Chris Cannon's your go-to guy. So I just, this is the first time I showcased that logo. Hope you guys like it. And I'm on Twitter, at Gabe Villamazar. Anyway, so as I joined Hireview, my team there's like, Gabe, you have to put what you have in your mind on a piece of paper. Because what you have is pretty crazy good. So I'm like, okay, fine. So this, the slide that you're looking at right now has been a, a, a in, the make, in the making for the past four years. Like this is the secret sauce. This is what I'm gonna deep dive and show you how to do it for whatever reason you want to accomplish. Uh, so it begins with the social selling intro, right? So w whether you're a sales rep and you wanna teach social selling to your reps, uh, you wanna start here. Whether again, if you're trying to find a job, okay, you wanna follow these steps. Whether you're a, a VP or a founder, okay, you can do these steps to get more business, et cetera. But you need to know, first of all, what is social selling, where it's been, and the future of social selling, okay? Right now, we haven't crossed the chasm of social selling, meaning the majority of the world has not adopted social selling. The majority of the world are still doing phone calls, they're still emailing, they're still faxing, they're still sending pizzas, that works. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> the buyer, right, is on social media. And we need to learn and engage and embed ourselves in the buying process where your buyer is. If your buyer's on Snapchat, you have to be 24 seven on Snapchat, okay? And, and you're either making excuses or you're executing. So find out what is social selling in your industry and how it relates to you. Number two, social optimization. How can you optimize each one of your social media profiles to stand out and create a credibility trigger for your buyer? Your LinkedIn profile is no longer your resume, it's your online reputation, okay? Your LinkedIn profile is not your online resume, it's your LinkedIn reputation. And same goes along to your Twitter profile, to your Snapchat profile, to your Instagram. Like, if you're gonna embrace on, and embark on the social selling journey, then you might wanna make that mind shift and really believe that, okay, if my buyer were to look at my Snapchat, or my Instagram, or my Twitter, or my LinkedIn, or my Meerkat, or Periscope, would, they, would it create a credibility trigger? Would they see me as a source of value? Would they see me as the go-to person to find out about X, Y, Z? If, that, if your answer is no, then you can definitely improve on that specific aspect. Then, after you've kind of optimized your social media profiles 100%, you want to listen for the right cues, for the right verbiage, on the right channel at the right time. We're going to deep dive in all these. Then you have to engage. You want to also engage in a non-creepy way. How many of you have, have connected with somebody, and as soon as, they, as soon as they connect with you, they pitch you their product or service? Right, we all freaking hate that, and those are the want to be social sellers. So those people are screwing social selling and not doing anything with it. Um, not, but last but not least, how can you actually move the deal forward? Okay, I say that nothing happens when you're in the social selling friend zone. You know, we've all been in the friend zone. You get no action. <laughs> I've been in that place myself a few times. Um, my point is, you want to move the relationship forward if you want to close the deal. If you want to, if you want somebody to invest in your company, if you want to get that job, etc. Okay, and then last but not least, how can you track all of this to create a predictive social selling model? There's a buzzword, predictive social selling, predictive analytics, predictive whatever, predictive that, but reality is, how do I know how many appointments, how many touch points does it take for me to set an appointment? If I can track and measure, okay, for me to set an appointment with my potential buyer, it takes three phone calls, two emails, three tweets, a LinkedIn email, and two messages. Great, do that times five, and you're guaranteed to have five appointments per day. Okay, as simple as that. But you need to be able to track it, otherwise if you can't measure it, you can't track it. So let's go into step number one, social selling intro. Uh, now I'm not against traditional prospecting. A lot of people are like, okay Gabe, great, social selling, I'm all about social selling, Let, let's do this. 
I'm not going to call anymore. I'm not going to email. I'm not going to do this or that. that. That's not what social selling is at all. You see, what happens is the workforce is, very, is the most diverse it's ever been. And by 2020, 75% of the workforce are going to be composed by millennials. So what does that mean? That right now, there's, some of your buyers are baby boomers. Some of your buyers are Gen, uh, Gen X, uh, millennials, tweens, Gen Y, or whatever. So because we have a diverse workforce, you have to mix the both for best world. You want to infuse traditional selling with social selling and then create the best sales process for you to get somebody's attention. Okay, and I'm not going to talk about these, but you can kind of see what, what's the difference between both of them. Okay, something interesting that I noticed is if you go to Google Trends and you see what's going on with the term social selling, worldwide people are searching for social selling and a lot more people are searching less, I'm sorry, less people are searching for cold calling. So we start seeing the mind shift, right? We start seeing the shift how social selling in three to five years is easily going to take over cold calling. And that tells you that more people, right, in this generation that who are alive, which is the best time to be alive ever with all this technology being developed, right, that social selling is going to be the future of selling. And it's not going to be called social selling. It's just going to be selling. Okay, so next, uh, social optimization. Now let's talk about more about this. Um, whoops. Um, not just create your profiles. A, a lot of us, it's very easy to create a social media profile and leave it at that. But first of all, complete your social media profile 100%. LinkedIn tells you you have an all-star profile 100%. Good job. Okay, that, that doesn't tell you anything. Okay, that, that's enough, good enough for LinkedIn so they can sell your data and then people can serve you ads. Right, AJ? Um, but in reality, right, you want to do more than that, okay? You want to communicate not to the recruiters on LinkedIn. If your buyers are on LinkedIn, you want to communicate to your buyers, okay? So then do your research. What are the top 10 keywords that your buyer, that moves your buyer forward? What are the top 10 keywords that your buyer wants to see on your LinkedIn profile so that you move and accelerate the sales process, okay? Only a few of you really will do this, but if I were you, and if you don't know the top 10 keywords that move your buyer, then you definitely can go find out and do that research. So as a to-do list, right, for Tireview, I know that my buyers care about candidate experience, hiring process, ATS, applicant tra tracking system, uh, hiring, interviewing, video interviewing, digital interviewing. So those keywords resonate with my buyers and they eat it up. So then if I include those words on my LinkedIn profile, on my Twitter, on my Facebook, then guess what? It's going to create a, cr a, a trigger, a trigger event. It's going to happen. And they're going to trust you, and sooner or later, you're going to get them to do what you want them to do. Okay? Um, include call to actions. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And create credibility triggers. So my name is Gabriel Via Mazar, not Villa Miser. Whoever called me Villa Miser. <laughs> no, just kidding. No. People, somebody uh, at church uh, like last week called me Velas Minar. I'm like, what? How did you get Velas Minar from Via Mazar? Um, anyway, but uh, no, just kidding, dude. Love you, bro. Um, Gabe Via Mazar, right? So I used to tell people on the phone, my name is Gabriel Via Mazar. I work with InsightSales.com. How may I help you? Now, whenever I told somebody, hey, like, let's connect on LinkedIn, well, they couldn't find me because I'm telling them over the phone that my name is Gabriel and my name online is Gabe, okay? So make sure if your name's Robert and if you go by Rob that you have the same exact name on every single social media profile. And if your Twitter handle is Rob69-1988, no one's going to be able to find you. And what is 69? Are you kidding me? Like, and, and, okay, that wasn't appropriate. Um, uh, my point is, you want your first and last name to be your username, your display name, your company name, whatever it is you go by, okay? And it's, as long as it's professional, you want that to be consistently so it has the same brand and it has a consistent message. Um, and as you can see here, our picture, I make every, all of our 66 sales reps for everyone in our company have the same banner image. Everyone has a story to tell. Learn more at hireview.com, okay? And I've gotten so many compliments from this, and our sales reps get so many things with, where they say, oh, wow, I went to the demo page, and I saw this image. I went to your CEO's page, Mark, Mark Newman, and I saw this image. I went to your uh, LinkedIn page, and I also saw this image. So it, it ingrains, right, all this good data and all these call to actions. So that's optimization. Another cool thing that uh, was mentioned earlier today is you can write LinkedIn posts on uh, your LinkedIn profile. And I've written about nine of these posts, and it's crazy how I think I've gotten over 20,000 views. 
And uh, a lot of these companies like Microsoft and LinkedIn reached out to me for writing blog posts. I mean, English is my second language, right? And it doesn't come very easy for me to actually write a post. But when I do, okay, I make sure it's, it's, it's visible and it, and it adds value. Now, any of us can really try to be visible. And if you're visible and don't add value, then you're going to be an epic fail. So make sure that when you do write content, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a sales rep, or whether the situation may be that you are visible and you add value. Don't sell your product right away, okay? That's what everybody else is doing. You wanna be unique, you wanna stand out, add value two or three times and then pitch your product. Uh, so I highly recommend people do that. Again, uh, your top skills. A lot of you may say, oh, I'm really good at negotiation. I'm really good at sales, uh, closing deals. I'm a quota crusher or I'm really good at social media, whatever it may be, okay? The top skills you want to reflect are the keywords that your buyer wants to see. How can this person I'm looking at right now, how can they help me hire faster? How can they help me hire better talent? How can I find more qualified talent that is gonna help me triple my business this year? So take a look at your skills. Maybe the last time you looked at them was a few years ago and you still have customer service or mopping floors or whatever. Okay, maybe those skills are good to have, but you wanna communicate those skills to your buyer and make sure that those are Again, credibility triggers, and that those are the ones that you want to uh, have a reputation by. Step three, social listening. Okay, so what can you learn everything about your buyer? Okay, who they are, where do they, want, where do they go to school? And it's really creepy. With social media, you can really find all of this information. And I'm gonna show you a few tools that just do that. Um, there's a lot of cool apps, social networks, and I like to say don't pay for attention. Uh, meaning, if you are gonna social sell, it's good to have a pay pay to play strategy, I'm not against that. But when social selling, right, I say don't pay for attention, actually pay attention, right? Because there's so much social data out there. I mean, you can easily say, who's talking about beer within a 40 uh, mile radius from this second specific spot? And if I am Budweiser, then I probably wanna target those people, okay? And then that's when you do pay to play. But first, pay attention, create a strategy, and then Okay, pay to play, but you have to really pay attention. So something cool, uh, that I, uh, a free tool that's owned by Twitter, it's called TweetDeck. Uh, it's very cool because you can actually see, hopefully this doesn't give you a headache, but these are columns of news feeds of specific keywords or Boolean searches that I want to be known for, or I'm sorry, that I want to uh, search for. So on the top left, you can see right there, it says, I want in this specific column, anybody who's tweeting higher view, recruiting, open view, Hashtag HireView, HireView.com, whenever anybody mentions our, our CEO, okay? And then if you put the capital O and the capital R, that's called Boolean search. If you go to Google, just put social Boolean search. You're gonna find a lot of cool ways how you can implement and create a crazy search parameter that shows you everything about anybody on Twitter. And there's a lot of other tools like that that do that same for Facebook, that do the same for LinkedIn, et cetera. So a really cool tool, it's free. Um, this is an awesome example. Um, what happened here, this is like two days ago. Well, I took a screenshot of this two days ago. But the recruiter at Nestle, who's a potential buyer of Hire View, did a post and she said, fellow recruiters, I'm taking a poll. How many of you read cover letters? Just curious. 333 people, okay, organically commented on this. You know what I did? I turned to my sales team and be like, let's devour these freaking leads. These are 333 people who can buy Hire View. Because, and you know what our pitch was? Hey, notice that you commented on the post about cover letters. Just wanted to share this article about the difference between video interviewing and cover letters and how we're better than them. See, it's, just, it's, not, it's not a hard pitch. It's not like, let me show you a higher view demo because we don't know who they are yet, but I know that if they commented on something like this, they're a potential buyer. And there's hundreds, hundreds of stories like this all over social media where you can mine the crap out of them and give them to your sales reps you can help them make money, you're gonna feel better, they're gonna feel better, everybody wins. So, now, another cool tool you can use for listening is called Rifle by CrowdRiff. This tool is total creeper status, but it's fair game because it's social selling. <laughs> so what I'm saying by that is, if I wanted to sell something to Starbucks, and I wanted to communicate to the VP of sales of Starbucks, I wanna really understand who Starbucks is, who they like, where they tweet, what they tweet, who do they talk with, which hashtags do they use the most. Well, CrowdRiff uh, by Rifle lets you do that. It tells you, here's all the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
Foursquare and Tumblr profiles. It tells me how many retweets do they get per tweet. It tells me how many favorites do they get per tweet. It tells me right here, I'm not sure if you can see it below the bar, the top hashtags that the account of Starbucks uses the most. So let's say they use the hashtag about company culture, then I definitely want to in include that company culture hashtag in my outreach to my buyer or to that person who I want to get their attention. It also tells me who did they talk with the most. So they talk about tweet at coffee, Starbucks store, which URLs do they share the most on Twitter? Okay, how many um, replies, retweets, and original tweets they do? And this is freaking sick right here. I mean, you can see what days do they tweet the most. And if I wanna get a hold of the social media manager of Starbucks, I'm not gonna tweet at that person right here. They never tweet on this day. I'm gonna tweet at them on this time, on this day, that's when they tweet the most, okay? And the same applies to your buyer, or to that recruiter, or to that person you're trying to get the attention of. And you can see that they use Hootsuite, so they're tech savvy. They are using um, Twitter for iPhone, so they're Apple fan. So if I were to say, hey, the Apple, if I were to start a conversation about the next iPhone, the iPhone 7, then I'll, I would click with that person right away, guaranteed. And uh, I know they're using Twitter.com desktop application to, to uh, tweet a lot of this stuff. Step number four, how am I doing on time? I got, I'm good? Okay, 20 minutes more, all right, let's keep going. Engagement, right? Don't, like I, like I mentioned earlier, don't connect and pitch your product. That's like one of the worst things you could possibly do. Okay, you're gonna come, uh, come across very uh, creeper status. Like I said, uh, add value by sharing educational content. And this can be some, sometimes very hard because you might say, well, Gabe, I, I'm not a good writer. Or Gabe, um, I don't have time to write, okay? And well, there's good news for you. There's a lot of people who have the same audience as you who are not competitors, which you can use their content or syndicate their content and share that content with your buyers, okay? So if that's your case, then again, use third-party content, add value, stay visible, don't pitch right away. Something else that I like to tell people is whenever you do your outreach, whenever you engage with your buyer online, I like to tell them do a three-by-three three social outreach. Find three things about your buyer in three minutes or less. And those three things can be about their personal life, about their business, and about their industry. I mean, whenever you do an outreach of this nature, you definitely get their attention, you definitely get a good conversation, and you might get a close. If you do this compared to like, hey, my name is Gabe, I want a 30 minute mini meeting with you, talk about higher view. I mean, how many of those emails, right, does a buyer get like that? Think of like, really, we need to start thinking outside the box. And, and social selling is not different than any other tools we've had in the past. I mean, remember, think of like when email first came out and you were telling the post office guy, oh yeah, everybody in the world's gonna have an email address. The post office guy's like, bull crap, dude, are you kidding me? Like everybody's writing hand letters and that's gonna stay forever till we die. I mean, fast forward 10 years, 20 years now, and everybody has multiple email addresses, right? So the same with social selling, it's just getting started. Okay, if you, if you adopt it and embrace it right now, you're gonna be ahead of the curve. And not just that, but you're gonna be able to stand out. Because what's gonna happen is once social selling gets adopted worldwide by the masses, this is not gonna work. This is really not gonna work. It's all about taking that first move advantage, okay, optimizing your process and winning. Okay, so now is the time to really embrace social selling. And uh, like I said, build relationships of trust and then don't stay in the friend zone, move forward and close the deal. What not to do? These are like the real people. Rosemary, I'm sorry if, you're <laughs> if, you, if you know Rosemary or if she's watching this or whatever. Ryan Parker, <laughs> MD, Rahman. Um, sounds gangster, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, li literally, I connected with Rosemary and she said, hi Gabe, would you be interested in B2B professional list? Delete, unfriend, unblock, whatever, triple block. Um, Ryan Parker, like Ryan, are you kidding me, bro? Are you expect me to read all this whole, your whole testament? I mean, I have a hard time reading already. I'm ADD, right? I'm with sales reps. It kind of brushes up on me as well. Um, or Mr. Or, or Rahman, right? Hey, thanks for connecting with me. Oh, cool. He wants to have a conversation. Wait, wait a second. Is he really trying to have a conversation with me? You have an impressive profile. Ooh, he's feeding my ego. I feel good. Um, how are you doing? How's it going for you? I live in Houston, blah, 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 blah. If you read all the way to the bottom, he's pitching me something. Okay, how, how sucky is that, right? So don't be like any of these people. This is not social selling. This is social spamming. 
Okay, so you definitely don't want to be this person. Now, a good social selling strategy or content sharing strategy that you can deploy ASAP is something like this. I call it the 311. Okay, so this is something that we do at Hireview. Let's say if we were to tweet about uh, three times, uh, five times per day. This is five pieces of post uh, per day. Then my first three tweets are going to be third party content, meaning something of uh, either a partner or uh, my CEO or somebody's content from the company. My next tweet then is going to be a promotional content. Hey, check it out. We won this award. We won the best place to work for in Utah by Fortune 500. Uh, we uh, have a webinar. We have a user conference June 13th to the 15th in Park City. Uh, check out this case study. Check out this whatever. Now, and then the next tweet can be something about your company culture, your personal life, your cat, your dog, whatever you want. But by following something like this, you're not talking about me, me, me 24-7. All of us really who want to embrace social media and social selling, we, have, we, we want to survive, okay? A lot of these small businesses or businesses go bankrupt. So because it's in our DNA to survive and to really stand out, we want to talk about ourselves the whole time, okay? And social media doesn't work that way. We go to social media to catch up with friends. We go to social media to learn. We go to social media to uh, connect with other people. And if you talk about your product the whole time, you're definitely going to fail. And not just that, how can you mix it up? Not just text, not just images, but you can use videos. I just actually bought today a 360 camera. I didn't even know they existed. But I went to Best Buy, and, and I'm like, and I'm thinking, literally, I'm like, how can I step my social media game? Because it's so hard to stand out on Facebook. We have 13,000 followers on Facebook. It's a vanity metric, I know. But I'm like, how can I create rich content that's going to stand out from the crowd? So I realized that this 360 social camera lets me create a video, let's just say of my office, if I want to recruit more people at HireVue. And then what I could do is post it on Facebook, and people can actually tilt their device or grab their mouse and move the camera around once it's posted. I mean, how cool is that? I'm like, none of my competitors are doing that. No, I've never, I've hardly seen any posts on the newsfeed that have a 360 camera. Are you, do, are you using it? Yeah. Well, you're legit. Uh, that's awesome. Let's give it up for uh, Color on. All right. Exactly. So look how many people in the room are. I mean, I know about it. Maybe some of you knew about it, and she's done it. I haven't even done it. So think outside the box. How can you stand out, and how can you be that purple cow like Seth Godin says? Social commitment. You don't want to stand in, in the social selling friend zone. Okay? Uh, think different. Move the conversation from online to offline. Okay? Let me repeat that one more time. Move the conversation or start the conversation online. Take the conversation offline, meaning if you start on Twitter, if you start on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, try to get to an email address. From an email address, try to go maybe a phone call or something else, and then uh, close the deal, whatever that might mean for you. And last but not least, the predictive social selling model um, is the most important, whether you're doing this for yourself, whether you want to roll it out for your sales reps, or whether you just want to have fun with it. We use a CRM, a customer relationship management system at HireVue, and we use Salesforce. Um, whether you use the spreadsheet, whether you use uh, you know, Soho, Microsoft Dynamics, Eloqua, and Eloqua's not in that. Uh, anyway, anything like that, you want to make sure you track it. Again, you want to be able to say, I mean, how cool does it sound when you say, yeah, it takes, it takes us 22 touch points with the buyer to set an appointment. Out of those 22 touch points, 13 or 15 of those touch points are from social media, okay? And how do I know that? How have I memorized that? Because I've been able to track it. I've been able to track everything our sales reps do, and I've been able to say, okay, if you want to win this week, if you want to hit our number this quarter, if we want to increase revenue this year, we're going to have to do X, Y, Z. It's going to take 22 touch points to set an appointment with a potential buyer. Are you doing those 22 touch points, yes or no? If it's no, then they're sucking. If it's yes, then they're, they're killing it. Um, so what else here? Uh, moving on here. Something that we had to do, uh, which if you are using a CRM, I had to work with a sales, our Salesforce admin, and we had to modify the layout. So that way, whenever, if I'm a sales rep and I tweet at my buyer, if I connect with my buyer on LinkedIn, if I send an email, I want to manually log that activity. So let's say I just got done with that contact, I log onto my CRM, and I, do, I click a drop down box and I say, I just did this activity. It might be a pain in the butt, but again, you want to have a competitive advantage of being predictive. 
Okay, by looking at historical data to predict the future, that's how you're gonna win in 2016 and moving on. Last but not least, if you wanna learn more about this and in an uh, in-depth manner, then I'm launching a social selling course called Embed Social Selling. Okay, uh, it's fairly cheap. After the month, it's gonna triple in price because apparently like, I have a lot of demand for this course. Um, and we're gonna do Q&A right now. Again, check out my logo, pretty sick. <laughs> and uh, GVM is our at hireview.com. Uh, and embedsocialselling.com. Thank you so much for being here. Love you guys. Take care.